Hello and thanks for joining us on the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout. I am Kemi Fola Adiemo. Of course, we remind you that it's 93 days to the conduct of the 2019 general election. Have you collected your permanent voter card? Today on the program, Labour issues December ultimatum for 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Our next chairman vows that 2019 elections will be free, fair and credible. And later on the show, El Rufai defends Muslim Muslim ticket says government house is neither a mosque or a church. I'll be hanging out today with Abajide Koladi Otitoju as well as Ghani, Kayo de Balogun and Dari Udufowokon. John, let's hang out. That's now. All right, there's a popular saying that goes thus. The battle has ended, but the war isn't over yet. Several attempts by organized labor to pressure the government to increase the national minimum wage have been successful, but those efforts are yet to produce perfect results. As the Ding Dong affair between the two could have grave consequences. On Tuesday this week, organized labor gave December as the deadline for the full implementation of the 30,000 Naira new national minimum wage for workers. Uh, the Trade Union Congress President Boboy Kegama said workers are waiting for President Buhari to forward the bill to the National Assembly for passage, warning against any reduction in the amount agreed upon by the Tripartite Committee. Meanwhile, the presidency says the president didn't promise 30,000 naira as the minimum wage after receiving reports of the committee, but would rather consult on it. So this uh, is going to be the first crux of our discussion. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program this evening. I'll start with you, Diary. Uh, what do you make of this, this twist? Will workers indeed uh, go on strike owing to the failure of governments to reach a, uh, to well end this whole dialogue once and for all well, i don't see a twist yet sincerely reading through uh, the sides to this uh, new development i still don't see a twist i rather say the like i've said before on this program the labor unions or leadership in nigeria needs to be more serious especially in issues that affects workers' welfare. Negotiations with authorities and governments, they need to be very, very serious and more tactical. They threatened the strike. They called off the strike. Told the public that, oh, an agreement has been reached. Once you say you have reached an agreement for which purpose you call off a planned strike, it comes to the public or people that you have a done deal. If you are now telling us you, you will not take any uh, reduction in the agreed uh, amount, and the president is saying the president never agreed. And I remember very well that when the strike was called off, labor and the representative of government told us on here that they have agreed that both 24,000 era and 30,000 should be sent to the presidency. Is that an agreement? But Ms. Purple, Madam Purple is quoted to have said the 30,000 Naira was indeed um, detailed in that report that was presented to the president. To the president. Now, the question is, if you send it to the president, within the provision of our constitution, can the president decree 30,000 Naira as minimum wage? The answer is no. So it's a process. Now the president, either he agrees with it or not, is even secondary he will still have to send this to the National Assembly. Which he did said uh, in his address. Uh, all right, that said, now Dari has stated his own yeah. point. Uh, wh what do you think? Uh, is there really a foot dragging on the part of the president as uh, Labour is now uh, alleging? Well, we can play back uh, past editions of this program where we have stated clearly mm. that the Nigerian governors will rather let air freeze over yeah, before they pay 30,000 minimum wage. We said it many times that what they are trying to do is push the problem forward until after the elections. Yes, the president did accept 
the recommend, recommendation of the Tripartite Committee. committee. Right, right. And it's just a matter of semantics. Of course, we all know that under the law, they will still have to pass it on to become law. <coughs> and I think the law is getting tired that after almost two weeks, when the strike was called off, there had really been no movement in that direction from the presidency. And that is like somebody who is scammed by somebody. The appropriate Yoruba, uh, the appropriate Yoruba adage cannot be used on this program. So, but you know what I'm trying to say. So what we need to do now is, I hope this new deadline will not again hmm. be a fool's errand for their members who are frankly tired. Because we and I know that the moment 30,000 was announced, certain indices of inflation will have gone up. I mean, it's in a Nigerian way. It will go up automatically because they assume that the 30,000 will be paid immediately. But having said that, the thing we need to work on is to ensure that labor this time does not fall for that gimmick. Unless you have a signed, sealed, and delivered agreement. So you have no, no problems with the strike if and when the labor declares? No, no same person mm. in Nigeria of today mm. will have problems with them resorting to strike. Because those who are supposed to okay. do certain things for them are dragging their feet. Oh, all right, and then we turn to you, uh, Babajide. There's, there's now the allegation, because I've had to go back and forth now to the president's address. And now, of course, some words have been dropped here on this table that could there have been a scam? Could the average worker have been scammed <coughs> into celebrating prematurely that the 30,000 Naira uh, agreement or increment was a done deal? I, I, I do not see a scam. What I want to see is for the president to send that is a the bill. bill to the National Assembly. He owes Nigerians that. That's his responsibility. And about that, he has no reason to waste time. He has no reason to waste time. This is not uh, uh, the sort of thing that the president will waste time about. By averting a strike, we saved ourselves the possibility of losing about 6.5 billion a day. We saved ourselves. Minimum of 6.5 billion a day. A country that is broke, though our leaders never admit it, we know how much, how much we are spending to service debt. More than half of our, our revenue goes to servicing debt. Our, our budget, we have to take loans to finance our budget. So we know the state in which we are. And at this time, no sensible person would encourage a strike. We do not want to see a strike happen because that strike will show clearly that the, the, the Nigerian leadership does not know what it's doing. And I don't want to believe that they will sit there in Abuja and feel comfortable about the possibility of a strike. Nobody wants to see that. And at this stage, they cannot renegotiate what has been negotiated. They can't. They can't. That's not how it's done. That's not how it's done. The Somono, when, when this, uh, the uh, uh, Alaji Somono, so pretended the clamor, the demand for minimum wage of 125 naira in the early 80s, we remember, I wasn't too young to remember how it went. So you can't, no matter what government officials, because most times the aides of the president complicate matters by the tactless manner they even answer questions from journalists. They complicate matters, make matters difficult for the old man. The things that they are not supposed to say, they say, they send the wrong signals out. Ah, oh, this government can't be trusted. Oh, this government doesn't want to, 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 to implement. Meanwhile, that may not be the case. But you send the wrong signals out by the things that you say. You can't renegotiate what's been agreed. All right. Hold on, All right. A, little, hold on a little bit. The governor of Cardinal State, while addressing his colleagues in the governor's forum, was saying, oh, that governor states should be allowed to determine what they can pay. Nasir Erufai, that will happen only after the constitution has been amended. And you know that. 
You know that. You read the Constitution. Nasir Ayer Rufai played a part in giving us this Constitution that we have today because he used to work for uh, Nigeria's former military head of state, Abdul Salami. He knows. The letters of the Constitution are not strange to Nasir Ayer Rufai. He knows that we cannot, we cannot have individual minimum wage in our country unless the constitution is amended so there's nothing like suggesting oh this let that happen when the constitution has been uh, amended when governors influential governors like nasiru begin to talk in this way they are sending a wrong signal to workers that oh after we went through this rigors this uh, of uh, of, uh, of of meetings and all that these people are trying to shift the goalpost let's move let's move on now with with all that have been said uh, we, we we come now to diary with all that has been said now with, there's a new deadline it won't be the first time the nlc will be presenting nigeria and the government pass that be that is with a deadline what actions are you expecting to see or do you feel this will just be like the same old circle well uh, I'll, I'll pray there will be no action like a, that we can call a strike action. I'll pray, personal opinion, personal desire in this situation. We are at a time in our uh, life as a nation that we should avoid things that can draw us back. And it's unfortunate that both labor and government are handling this issue this way. How do you expect labor to do like, What do they have to do? See, I, I, it's my opinion. No, no, no. You and I want to put it this way. They had a better... I mean, they had a chance to handle it in a better way. This is what I mean. If there was no concrete agreement, were the governors not represented on that committee? They were. They were. And they are quoted to have even absented themselves From on, the, set, on several you. locations. They have, they, on several... Even at the last time, there, were, there was no concrete commitment to this thing. You see, I, while I do not wish, while I'm happy that we have battered that strike, I would have preferred Labour went on that strike to push this demand. It is not about the leadership of this Labour. It is about the people. And the government knows what they are doing. Like you rightly said, sir, they are for dragging. They want to push this evil day. And like you said, these governors want to change the goalpost in the middle of a match. How can any governor today, after that agreement, after, after we all had that it has been sent to Mr. President, and after President, Mr. President himself waited two weeks doing nothing, then the governors called an emergency meeting to discuss what? Oh, the part of what I even agree no, with them that there should be a new revenue allocation formula. Fine. They're asking that is for what that. They want to talk that about. has right. been an issue for some time. But I, I, and it's I, I, a legitimate I, demand. Good. And but it's a legitimate demand because, look, see, we have to be fair to them. Okay. If they have to pay a new, a new minimum wage now, okay. then they will need uh, no, they will need more money. More money. And they are looking at the revenue allocation formula that many Nigerians. Them. And Many Nigerians have even dubbed it illegal. Illegal. So if they get a better deal, which I'm sure even the president is not uh, really it. against so because must, he has talked must, about it before, see, this, then this, this, it means this, that they will get more money. It takes, so it takes me back to what I'm saying. If we know or if labor leaders knew mm. that these issues are there mm. and are likely to affect the eventual outcome of these negotiations, I would rather have think that all these issues should have been taken into consideration. If the governors are now saying they no, see, for them to they agree, let me, tell you, you see, let me tell you, when they talk about tripartite meeting, Good. it's not about governors. Yes, labor. it is called labor, government, yeah. and the private and sector. Private private now, sector. The, the, the government in this case, yeah. by international convention, is referring to the federal, federal government, government. All right, not state right. government. We've run out of Ooh. time on this arm of the topic. was just being polite Good. when he said, we already let's have our governors. Kill. Right. Represent on each of us. Right. 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 No, I'm afraid, gentlemen, uh, we, I'm afraid, no, no, gentlemen, no, no. we have to rest. We have to rest at this program now uh, and move <laughs> on. It's, 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 it's just uh, unfortunate that time isn't our friend on this show, particularly. But uh, as we mentioned earlier, the 2019 general election is 93 days away. Should uh, Nigerians worry about the conduct of the all important?
important poll. Well, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has an answer and has assured of the commission's readiness to referee a free, fair and credible exercise. He says, despite challenges like vote buying, do or die mentality, intra-party conflicts and litigations, as well as lack of consequences for electoral offenders, INEC will give the country an election everyone will be proud of. Uh, well, we'll begin this uh, debate now with uh, Ghani. Do you trust Professor Yakubu's words uh, with all the serious looking challenges he already pinpointed? Well, we have to trust the institution at a point in time. Mm. We can't always bash them on the head. And they have 93 days to prove that they can do this job. Don't forget that even with the world class, if I may use that word, election that was delivered by Mamou Jiga four years ago. There are still people who believe that there are still errors yes. in the conduct of the election. Of so what this man is doing is setting himself up a standard that he wishes to live up to. And he's making a promise based on his reputation to do this. So based on that, we cannot preempt the results or even the conduct of the election. We can only try as journalists to try and trust the institution. But how do you weigh, uh, Professor Mahmoud's words uh, now, especially when you weigh it against the fallout of primaries in major parties? And of course, uh, Yakubu also went on to say that at least 100 cases are in court now involving, at least 200, right, involving the INEC within the period of the uh, end of primaries. The, there is not INEC can do about parties going to court over their primaries. Uh, in most of the parties, the conduct of uh, the primaries uh, can best be described as shambolic. There, there were even cases of people being uh, wrongfully disqualified. Ushio Mole has apologized to an aspirant in Kwara because he was disqualified in Nero. And there's nothing you can do because that face of the electoral process is gone. You cannot make amends. It's too late to make amends. So you have to apologize. So many things happened. So many things happened. You can't call what happened in some of those states the real primaries. They're just deceiving themselves. Mm. Just deceiving themselves. And a lot of what went on, vote buying, even at state, at party level, happened. Bribery and corruption at party level happened during these primaries. So there's nothing that uh, Professor Mahmoud can do about that. The fact that they've taken themselves to court. Oh, you've cheated me. I'm taking the party to court. Some of the people have defected. In the House of Reps alone, the APC must have lost up to 38 members to the other parties, arising largely from primaries. the way the primaries were handled. So, and the same thing, some have defected too, from, the, from the PDP, although the bulk of the crisis was in the APC. It may be bitter to the heirs of APC members, but that is the reality. So, but for, for Mahmoud, he already has someone that he can look up to. And that is... His predecessor. His predecessor. His predecessor had very high in, uh, integrity quotient. And because the former president, Jonathan, was told that this is the man who can do it, give us very good election, he went after him. He sent people to beg him. He didn't want the job. But in the end, he convinced him because he was part of the Waste co uh, co uh, co uh, Committee for elect yeah. Electoral Reform. That was where he was headhunted. And he did a good job by Nigerian standard. He could have been better, but he did a good job. Now what he has given himself, immortality. Internationally, Professor Jega is well known. He's been uh, called, Yara, dear, come and do this, come and teach us how it is done. Because that was an election that many thought would even lead to the extinction of Nigeria. But it didn't happen. For the first time, uh, the ruling party lost, and the president willingly conceded. conceded. Mm. So what 
Professor Yakub has to do now is tell himself that I want to do better than Jega. So that I can be respected everywhere I go. If he gives Nigeria a shambolic election, it will be, it will, it will be remembered as much as people res remember Maurice Wu. Yeah. I'm sure that is not the kind of memory that he wants Nigerians to have of him. So right. he has to give himself immortality by giving us a very transparent election. He has said that there will be a level playing field for everyone. There were things that I never promised that I didn't see in the last two elections. So if Professor Jega wants to be, I mean, Professor Yakub, Yakub wants to be true to himself, he has to make sure that some of those things that he promised, that he does. Like, after an election, we should be able to have results electronically transmitted from voting centers. From voting centers to, 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 to I never get what I anybody, everybody will have access right. to it. Kindly hold that thought. But will, th will that help uh, if we it's indeed ready. have, um, you know, uh, what, what do you call it now? We indeed have electronically printed results. Uh, transmitted. Trans transmitted. Results. transmitted. Will that really help the process? See, it, it will not just help. Transmitted results, yeah. It would help Professor Yakub achieve his desire of giving Nigeria a credible better yeah, let's just go with some we have better than 2015 in jega by nigerian standard that was something great now all he needs wants all he desires a better election than 2015 yes we also wish him such a luck but having putting in place this electronically transmitted results system will help him achieve that because it will reduce the doubts that usually come with collation of mm. results. Yes. And the, uh, the time well, involved. Time, ideally, we can't have it better than that, mm. given our uh, templates yes. and uh, a scenario as a country. We, it is quite a large country. We'll have to wait for these things to get to where we'll collate them. But if they're being transmitted, is guided electronically and can be retrieved mm. at any point in time we suspect foul play, Oh, what was sent? And, and we can is, see is, and it has not, not be possible this, to alter it. It, can, it, will be, it will be impossible to alter. Is, and it is not is. only INEC that will be guiding such. A lot of other uh, mm. uh, CSOs, uh, CSOs who will have access to monitor. Mm -hmm. It will help. But in addition to that, for Jega, I mean, for Yakub to achieve his aim, the maestro already said something that many of those things promised are not in place not yet. Delivered. One major one is provision for punishment for electoral offenders. If they have done anything about that now, I think they should start hyping it. That if you are caught or you are found to be involved in electoral malpractices, mm. offenses, this is your punishment. If we hype that enough, it will help dissuade some people mm. from vote bias. Especially vote buyers and uh, right. uh, thugs. Mm -hmm. If we spell out the punishment very clearly, I will make enough noise about it. Don't You're let's right. keep quiet on that and say people will change. And in any case, Professor Yakubu has already highlighted this issue of lack of punishment for the offenders. Yeah, but in what his, is he doing about what it? What is he doing? Which is what I, al I also want, what is he doing about I, it? I want um, him to address now. As in, why is uh, Professor Yakubu pushing uh, this out? Is this, is this something that is too late for us to have? done in this forthcoming election? Uh, the electoral act is very clear about punishment for those who disobey electoral laws, as it were. But we all know the way we behave in this country. Hmm. Just like the president said yesterday, about people not giving uh, something about punishment anymore. Hmm. People see the election day as their Christmas. Hmm. That day is the day some people will make the only money they will see the next four years. The punishment must be massive enough to deter yeah. that people at that it's level. Right, right now, three months in jail, six months in jail, will not stop a person who stands to make two million, three million naira on election day. If I willingly go, willingly go to jail, as far as that's that money, give it to his wife, I go to jail, to my next time. I come back to the next thing. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So these things are at different levels. And the first one we need to work on is to get the results at the world level, at the, what the, unit, level. At the unit level, where they vote. Yes. Once yeah, we the have unit. that, 
and everybody has that, then we are protected at that level. So at that level, you cannot do any more aki paki. Right. Can you please hold that yeah. thought? Um, John is joining us from yeah. Lagos. Uh, you're welcome. Carry on, please. Good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Carry on. Um, well, I wish to contribute concerning... I wish to contribute concerning first the minimum wage. Thank you. I wish to contribute concerning first the minimum wage and then the election. But before then, I wish to make an observation following quite some time I have watched this program. My first observation is that you give too much time to children than you give to other people. It covers a lot of... <laughs> All right, I'm afraid we don't have so much time, uh, but are you still there, John, to, dr to just make your point? Let's go on, please. All right, uh, unfortunately, we lost that call. Can they keep the calls coming in, even as uh, we, of course, uh, return to you, Ghani, now to, to just wrap up that point? Yeah, the, so what we need to do is ensure that it's no longer viable to cheat at a particular level. That's what we need to do. The punishment is part of the consequence. It's not really the problem. Look at the role that Kadrida played during the last election. last election. We all know that sooner or later people look for answers to it. But we need to keep moving forward uh, as far as technology is concerned. But to get to the point, just like everybody said, that we know the report in what A in Tudu Wada three minutes after it was posted. Uh, but Babaji, the, the parties now must portend some form of worry for the INEC chairman. I, I mean, with all that he has outlined, vote buying, do or die mentality, absence of internal democracy, and a host of other uh, challenges he faces. How can the parties now that will field candidates now on election days now, how will they help INEC's work? Let INEC help his own work. Because INEC is full of crooked people. <laughs> You saw the, the money that, um, that was recovered from my next staff who yeah, participated in the election in uh, River State. Mm. Bribes running into hundreds of millions. So in Professor Yakub's office are people out to make a fortune out of politicians. People out to rig elections on behalf of politicians. So when he talks about politicians and their negative uh, um, conduct on election day or even before election. He should also remember that he has to sanitize INEC itself. It's been a problem for some time. On election day, INEC staff are usually arrested while conniving with politicians to rig the election. It happened even in the Anambra election, I remember. That Jega was so ashamed that I said, look, they just need to lock these guys away. Mm. So within the INEC that he heads, there are bad eggs. So he has to look within. Because no matter how determined he is to give us transparent elections, mm. if there are people within the INEC fold whose ambitions are antithetical to the vision of the chairman, there's no way he will achieve his aim. Because as he's trying to give us good elections, their own goal is to make money that day, that day while sabotaging uh, the electoral process. He cannot, uh, he cannot say that he does not know that his own staff routinely connive with politicians to, to ensure that the, the, the fidelity of our elections are compromised. Right. That said now, so all eyes uh, remain on INEC now to see how well uh, the agency will deliver on its promises and, of course, see how history will judge uh, Professor Yakubu. Still to come on Journalist Hangout, El Rofai, that's the governor of Kaduna State, defends Muslim Muslim tickets, says government house isn't, uh, is neither a mosque nor a church. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching journalists Hangouts to Kaduna State now, where Governor Nasser El Rufai uh, doesn't seem to be new to controversies over policy decisions. He's also not known to back down easily on what he believes in. 
His decision to pick a Muslim, a fellow Muslim, as his running mate for next year's governorship election has sparked wild reaction. But he seems unperturbed. Uh, the governor wonders why the Muslim Muslim ticket is raising dust, claiming that the Kaduna State Government House is neither a church or a mosque, insisting that his choice was driven by competence, even though he added that President Muhammad Buhari had encouraged him to choose a woman. Let's listen to Governor Elufai. This is a capacity and competence ticket. I believe that in northern Nigeria, we need to have role models for our girls. Our girls should not grow up thinking that they are only good enough to grow up and be married, and that's it, and have children. Our girls must grow up to know that just as Dr. Hadiza Balarabi, by the grace of God, will be the next deputy governor of Kaduna State, they can be. Well, that's the crux of our dis uh, discussion at this time now. Uh, Dari, he says competence, you know, largely drove his decision to pick uh, Madam Hadiza Balarabi as his running mate. Uh, is that enough? He has been governor for four years. Yeah, he worked with some people within that period. So he, which we one may not want to fault his uh, opinion or judgment about competence. However, politics is, it, it encompasses a lot of things. I am afraid, not for El Rufai alone, but for his party, the ruling APC in Cardinal, with this his decision. Whether his decision is right or wrong is one issue. Whether it is politically expedient at a time like this or not is another issue. And I'd rather bother about the expediency, political expediency of his decision. He is a Muslim in a Kaduna state known for uh, incessant disagreements, to put it at the least, between religious faiths. And one area balance has been ensured over time in that state is having this Muslim Christian ticket in the, go uh, in the governorship of the state. A Muslim governor, a deputy Christian, or vice versa. For a governor to come now at this crucial time and say, I'm choosing a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, I'm choosing a Muslim as my deputy. Well, I can only wish his party luck. If I understand Kaduna State very well, that is a very bad move by Governor Erufai. A very bad move. And the leadership of his party, watching him do this, may know what I don't know. That's how I just want to put it. Maybe they know what I don't know. Uh, and then, Gani, how, how would you react now to, to, to uh, Darius' position? If you also look at it further now, the PDP Muslim candidate, if I should add that, uh, the governorship candidate that he is now chose someone also from that southern Kaduna region, now, but this time around a Christian. And then the governor is saying, it's not, um, southern Kaduna isn't, isn't solely, doesn't solely belong to Christians. Mm, neither, neither do, can we say the same thing for northern Kaduna? Northern Kaduna, Kaduna right. So and then, of course, the, uh, the less spoken about Rufai, as a man of principle, the better. Because Rufai was one of the three people when APC was formed who insisted that there will never be a Muslim split ticket for the presidents. Well, one of the three that insisted that the things should be put inside the APC constitution. That there, there will never be a president of vice of the same faith as it were. So to turn around now and use the same argument shows that it's been clever by half. Of course, he has always declared war by the people of Saddam Kaduna. Don't let us pretend about it. He said it is part, not, not part of the program, but he said that based on his relationship with them in the last four years, you know, so those who are complaining are those who have never voted for him in the first place. So that means he has assumed that because Kaduna has a Muslim majority in the north, and they can of course get away with anything. So what he's now trying to cultivate 
is also the minority Muslim, Muslim population in the South to come over to his side and form a Muslim agenda, as it were, in a state that is very vital when it comes to religion. He has shown that in his own mind, he has a strong will. But everybody else is just a short man uh, with a Napoleonic complex. Mm. Baba Didi, uh, yeah. what message is uh, the average Southern Kaduna resident now, or indigenous now, what, what, what message now are they already now in a lot of comments? And like has been established, he doesn't seem to be perturbed by the flurry of reactions his decision has earned him. You see, I want to look at it this way. The APC does not belong to Erufai. And Kaduna as a state does not belong to Erufai. If Erufai takes an action that is capable of costing the party the uh, victory in uh, the election, then they need to talk to him. I was born in Kaduna, I worked there, I did my youth service in Kaduna, I worked there for years. I know about Kaduna State. I can tell you that since Kasina was carved out of Kaduna, this is the first, and that was more than 30 years ago, this is the first time that this kind of thing Shenanigan. is about to happen. And Erufai cannot tell us that if he wants to reward women, cannot find a that he cannot find a Christian who can do it in a place that is overwhelmingly dominated <laughs> by Christians. Uh, he can't say that. The most part of he can't, the he states. can't say that. He can't say that. So, and if you are saying that, oh, the government house is not a mosque, or the government house right. is not a church, but the government house is a place of refuge for all. The government house ought to be a place where the sanctity of, of, uh, of uh, uh, even the truth, where fairness, truth, uh, justice, and equity is affirmed. That's what, that's what government house should stand for. Yes, we know it's not, uh, it's not a mosque. But the government house, represented now by the governor, should bear the complexity, the religious complexity, ethnicity of Kaduna in mind. Kaduna has more than 100 ethnic groups. It's just similar to Adamawa State. More than 100 ethnic groups. And the Christians are like 40%, at least, of the population. Yes. So other governors repeatedly, even when we had diarchy, you remember when Babangida created the diarchical form of government. The diarchical form of government is, we, we involves the military and the and civilian. civilian. We still had a woman as deputy governor in Kaduna State, Pamela Sadoki, and Pamela Sadoki was a Christian. So what is he telling, telling us? I've had people, because when you want to know how ridiculous some of our people are, they will tell you, oh, in any case, certain Kaduna people do not vote for not, uh, people uh, al is a lie from the pit of hell. I can tell you, even the last That's PDP, election in 2015. even the last PDP uh, uh, governorship primaries, there were nine Hausa Fulani candidates against Jonathan Kish from Southern Kaduna, and they rejected their son and voted, uh, voted for Isa Hashiru from Kuda. And Issa Hashiru and Issa Fulanima won the election. James Bauer Magaji used to be the deputy governor to Dabo Lere when he was governor. James Bauer Magaji contested against Nama Disambu, who became vice president. The people rejected their son and voted for Nama Disambu. Nama Disambu from Zaria. So what are they telling this us? This is an evidence anyone can look up if, that's not if, even, if, that's if not it's all. in doubt. Again, in, the, uh, in, in 2015, 2015 Gov uh, Ramalan Yero contested. Hmm. The people voted against their own son. James Bar Magaji, again, he went to the Labour Party. They refused to vote for him. They voted they for Ramalan Yero from Zaria. Hmm. So to say that people from Southern Kaduna will never vote for, it depends on what you do for them. Uh, uh, former Governor uh, Makarfi, Ahmed Mohamed Makarfi, 
got overwhelming support from Southern Kaduna to be re-elected uh, for a second term in 2003. Overwhelming support. Right. Why? Because it, 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 it was fair to the people. It gave them far more positions than Erufai has given them now. So Erufai is imperiling the chances of his own party by an action that he has taken in a state that is extremely volatile when it comes to religion. All right. I, I want, I want uh, Dari to please ad address that issue now of um, that angle now that Babajide raised. The, the party doesn't belong to El Rufai. Uh, but before you address that, Nuru is joining us. Uh, Sule, I should say, from Kaduna State. Welcome. Yes, uh, you, you really come at the, at the right time. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much. I think... Um, we are looking at the issue not from all angles. I think this issue is a product of injustice. Injustice has been going on in this country, in places like Plateau, in places like Benue, and in even some southwestern states. So if this issue was not addressed before, it will keep occurring in some other states. There are states where there are quite sizable number of Muslims, and yet they were denied the position. Take for instance, the last election, 2015 election, everybody knew that Lalong couldn't have become a governor in Plateau State without the vote of the large number of Muslims in, in, in Plateau State. And yet, nobody ever cared to consider a deputy governor from the Muslims in Plato State. Take also the, the case of Benue State. You have quite a large number. The, 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 the a former commissioner of police, Abu Bakr, is from Benue. There are quite a number of Muslims. So me, I see this issue as a product of injustice. All right. Injustice has been going on. Okay. All right. Thank you. To address this okay. issue. Thanks a lot. So, probably, okay. probably, advice will say, okay, since this thing has been happening in other so places, happen, let me as well replicate it here. All right. So, in other words, you're, you're, you're tacitly, you are agreeing, question, you're agreeing the to uh, the Sule, governor's position. This question for Sule, my friend, is how many local governments in yeah, Plateau State do That's we have really predominant Muslims? How many local governments? And, and certainly, the, they are the, the not, certainly, they are not more than three. And in Benue, right. in Benue too, Plateau, how many local governments we are, do, we, do we have a preponderance of Muslims? Oh, Maybe right. two local governments. Then go to Southern Kaduna, and go See, to Kaduna, I mean, there are at least know, 10 of them. Where you know that, where where you know that Christians these are Christians are dominate. So you do so not agree people, with, with, with no, 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 the Absolutely, solution. absolutely. absolutely. We cannot even justify what he has done no by the, by, I mean, even if you are saying justice in other places. Must that's must no justification the for the action that he has right. taken. Let me give Derek some time now too, because the governor also talked about this plateau example. See, uh, what I want to say is, it is sad that our politicians don't learn from history, history and even from recent, very recent occurrence. One will have thought that as close as uh, governors relate and they see the, the, the development don't learn in Ogun State. Mm -hmm. should have warned an Erufai off this path he's trading. And that takes me to the issue you raised about what the, why, why would the party allow him have his way? Probably ABC made up his mind that uh, Cardano is not important for it to win in 2019. Otherwise, I cannot understand why this is happening. You don't take the people for a ride. It is a lesson that, good enough, as we are evolving politically in Nigeria, and that's my takeaway from this preparation for 2019 election. We are really evolving. You don't take the people for, Look at what is happening in Ogun State to a sitting governor. If you take the people for a ride for too long, Nemesis have a way of helping the people who have been at... Uh, your mercy for too long. Mm. Erufai is playing with the victory of APC in Cardinal State with that decision. You cannot assume that you, what but you think is you. good for you will be good for millions for of party. people. Mm -hmm. Not even just your party now. The voters in Nigeria now, whatever he's having in mind about how he, he or his party intends to win the election, the voter is now king. The voter is now king. 
and you cannot change something that has practically become a norm. Yes. These are unwritten rules. In a state like Kaduna. In a yes. state like these Very are unwritten rules. Very volatile. And we've been able to, uh, man, you see, the Every Christians. Every conflict in that state the, have been due to religion. Religion. The Christians the in two Southern attacks Africa, you know, in Kasoma Ghana, those, those two attacks was based, th were based on religion. religion. And let me tell you, and let me tell you the recent. danger of what Erify. God forbid he has his way and APC wins and we now have a Muslim, Muslim deputy governor and governor. The people in Southern Kano, the majority, I don't want to say Christians in Southern Kano because the majority are Christians. Did you hear yourself? You said God forbid. Well, that he has, he gets away with this. Mm. Yes, God forbid he gets away with this. Mm. Whichever way is going to happen, God forbid. Because I know Kaduna very well. I served in Katina State. I schooled in Kano. So Kaduna is just like a second home. What I'm saying is that... You're you looking at security implications. The security implications. Right. The people in the South will feel alienated yes. from government. Mm -hmm. So if there is anything bothering them, they would rather take the law into their own hands than approach a government they feel rejected them by not putting one of them but, in, in, in but, government. But, but Ghani, this is danger. But, but Ghani, this, the average Southern Kaduna indigena, yes. as have been, you know, you know, asserted by all of you now, will still head to the poll, you know, to vote. And the governor has already said, okay, he will, he will try and pay up all arrears, all, all salary arrears and, and, all, and all that. But is so, it uh, really uh, as serious? Civil service. Civil service. Is it really as, yeah, as serious as, as that now? Looking at the security yeah, implications right. of the government's this, decision. This decision taken by l is a confirmation that all the problems in Katuna in the last three and a half years were directly or indirectly caused by the policies and programs of l mm. All the deaths that we've had, all the battles that has occurred in the states. Mm -hmm. So Zara Kaduna has shown that Rufai has not been an impartial habitat. Whatever happens. That's the that. message that this would say. And that's the message that has come across. Mm -hmm. That I'm dealing with you deliberately and I'm going to show this into your truth. That in this state, I'm the governor, I'm a Muslim. You can't be challenged. And you cannot challenge me because you're a Christian. And to ensure you don't challenge me, I'm not only going to problem. provide a backing for those who are killing you. Also to make sure that those are picked from oh, you can't, you can't say that, please. Yeah. That's what he's saying. No, no, no. no. That's what he's saying. Because by that's doing this, no, 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 no. that's what he's implying. No, he cannot, because any time there's crisis, he can do no. Please, he cannot. Erufai can't say that. No, no, no. That's, I'm not saying he's saying it. No, Erufai can't. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. We have to be careful what you say on a program like this. You can't even imply it. You can't imply it, please. I'm not implying anything. Please take it back. I'm taking it back. But listen, if two people are fighting, Mm -hmm. or two sides mm -hmm. are fighting mm -hmm. and anytime the governor will come and tell them stop this fight obey the law we'll do the best you can you go back nobody is punished the thing happens again in a few days governor comes back the same thing happens. It's not the that's governor. Uh, right. uh, it's but not the governor. That. That's beyond. That's the only to punish. No, no. Let's let let Gani round up this point. I will get. I will get to the point. So I understand that you now take you now take a decision like this. This decision that to put a Muslim Muslim ticket to a lot of people in Zara Kaduna is a confirmation of their fear that the governor has not been fair to them. All right, all right. Th that said, now, of course, all, all gentlemen, being uh, you know members of this noble profession, we all know uh, how 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 much our words weigh. Uh, Jude, I would I'd like to, to you to address, you know, this situation and the need why we really must be balanced. It's all. It's just um, one way of giving a sense of belonging to everyone. The people who have argued that he did it because mm, he believed that in any case they would not vote for him. Those those people know nothing about history mm. and we have already told them we've shown to them how the people of southern kaduna have rejected their own sons vote many, and many voted times. for our safala and people in the past you know in the past it's there they've re routinely they've rejected their own sons and voted how, how many they southern kaduna so, have even become uh, uh, no, so now, they so, don't have the population so you can't say that oh he knew yeah, that yeah, in any case they would not vote for him, for him. Yeah. why did they vote for uh, for yes. Makarfi, they, they voted you. more than eighty percent. Makarfi got more than eighty percent of the vote from the Southern Kaduna. Why? Because he reached out to them, and it was very, very fair. They got a fairer deal under him. 
in terms of the number of, uh, uh, yes. of uh, co uh, commissioners that went to them, even ambassadorial positions, the ambassador to board, Poland. Board appointments. Yeah. Ambassador to Poland. And generally, they enjoy that era. Even service chiefs, they produce service chiefs during that era. So you expect them to be happy. So if the Yorubas will say, yeah, language, like language. if you treat the people in a manner that shows even handedness, that yeah, shows that, look, you. You, will, you are ready to develop their area, you are ready to see them as your own people. You are the governor of everyone. In fact, as governor of everyone, you should even show greater love to people who were not born in the same place, in the place where you come from. And the governor's performance in this regard, with this outline that you've given... That way, it. the people we say, we have seen governors who behave like that, who, who develop their own areas last. Yes. Who started from area. Look, even the, uh, Chris Ngige, yes. despite the fact that the Uba brothers were harassing when he was governor, he, he, he was constructing roads in Chris Uba's hometown. He did it on purpose. And look, whatever you did, you, you, you kidnapped me. You did this to me. You did that to me. I will, not, I will not suffer your people. He gave them a what good road. Chris Ngige who is the Minister of Labour now. So there are times when you have to, yes, these people, over time, they don't seem to want to support me. But let me show, show them, let me support them. Let me, let me show them that, them. look, I do not really care about what they think of me. Let me go and do excellent work in the area. Their perception will change. And you see, it, it will turn things around so for you. So beyond Balaban text, you know, uh, the deputy governor, mm -hmm. now, uh, now nothing. Displays that no, the thing is, nothing, nothing was under was the done. man who was there before, you find chief of staff coming from Southern Kaduna, you find commissioner for wars, attorney general, Diplomats. you find commissioner for education, and then you are now surprised that they were voting uh, a mass yeah. for McCarthy. They will vote for him. They yeah. Let their own children so, co contest 10 times against McCarthy. Yeah, the people of Southern Kaduna will vote for McCarthy. That is the way it is. So it's not a question of, oh, someone said, oh, Southern Kaduna people don't vote for uh, not a Muslim right. or this thing. That is the limit of knowledge that they, they had. So what we have seen clearly, mm. that even Ramalan Yero got good votes. He got, they, he didn't, even their own the, son didn't get up to 5,000 votes. in labor or something. Uh, yeah, no, no. Oh, so, all right. That is the thing. Gentlemen, that said, I'm afraid we have to bring uh, this uh, robust discussion now to a uh, close. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of it all, of course, uh, you know, by, uh, by, by listening to the program and, of course, sending in your comments and all that. Don't forget, you can drop, uh, join us tomorrow for another episode of the program and on other platforms showing on the screen, um, YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News uh, Nigeria. Our feedback channel also remains journalists hang out at tvcnews.tv. Thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for your time with us you. on the program today. I am Kemi Foladi, Bye for now. God bless Nigeria.